before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles The Acts of the Apostles Acts 14 Acts 14 and it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were ware of it, and fled into Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Atalia, and thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Acts 15 And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. 
And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, Hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is, that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them, that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent, therefore, Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
has come. I thought you would say that my own time has come. See, there are many people that receive miracles, but they don't know the appearance of a miracle. It's like you've never met somebody before. And they say that his name is Miracle. And then he's passing by your side. And you don't even know him. And then I ask you, have you ever seen Miracle? I say no. I said, look at this person here. I say, yes, I see him. I said, do you know his name? I say no. I say his name is Miracle. Oh, that's who. Are you Miracle? You have got a miracle. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ was passing by. And he saw a particular fig tree. And that fig tree should normally have fruit. But there were no fruits there. Only leaves. And Jesus spoke the word. And he said, no man eat fruit of you anymore forever. And then he kept on going. And the disciples at that time, when Jesus spoke, did they see a miracle? Tell me out loud. No. no. Was there a miracle there? Yes. yes. And so, they were going. And they were wondering, how is it that Jesus spoke and nothing happened? Did something happen? Yes. Did they see it? No. You've got it. And so, they were passing the following day. As they passed now, Peter saw it. You will see it. Now, because it started from the root, and the root was under the ground, and they couldn't see that, but the following day, root, branch, leaf, everything dried up. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. I said tomorrow morning. You wake up like this. Ah, see what I didn't see last night. Now I see it. Now I see it. Now you will see in Jesus' name. And so now we're going to build up what has already happened. Don't say you didn't get, I got. Don't say you didn't have, I have. Your inheritance is there with you. Your miracle is there with you. You will share your testimony. We're going to pray together now. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name tonight. I will thank you for the great things you are doing. Lord, you've done a lot here tonight. And I pray your people will see it in Jesus' name. As we come to your word again, let your blessing flow to everyone. Let your power come upon everyone. Let your healing, your miracle, your deliverance come to everyone in Jesus' name. We pray for everyone listening everywhere. We pray, Lord, this will be a fruitful night for everyone in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Exodus chapter 19. I read verses 4, 5, and 6. Exodus chapter 19. Reading from verse 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above 
all people for all the earth is mine and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel as we come here tonight we need to realize that what the Lord said unto the children of Israel in the good olden days is saying to the people of God tonight and this word is for you the promise here is for you the prophecy here is for you the declaration of the Lord in this passage I read it is for you and everything will do good in your life in Jesus name he said you have seen that happened already and then it says this will happen it talks about the past talks about the present and it talks about the future a miracle of the past you have seen what i did unto the egyptians how i bear you on eagle's wings and i brought you unto myself that has happened already now therefore at this present time having done that for you in the past here is what will happen in the present day if you will indeed truly obey my voice and keep my covenant ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me that's happening there and that's still to happen as well above all the nations of the earth for all the earth is mine then it says in the future referring to us right now and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation when you came at this passage and i'm speaking to you on peculiar favor for the faithful peculiar favor for the faithful the lord tells us what he intends to do what he intends to make of us and what he intends to bring upon our lives as a result of the fact that we become a peculiar treasure unto the Lord and will show the faithfulness in obedience to the Lord I'm going to divide the message to three parts number one the purchase of God's favored people God favored his people he bought them he purchased them he paid the price for them and he brought them unto himself as his own inheritance the purchase of god's favored people number two the peculiarity of god's faithful people the lord said if you will obey my voice and obey my voice indeed this is what you will be you will be a peculiar treasure unto me that leads us to that second point the peculiarity of God's faithful people number three the priesthood of God's freed people he has set us free and he makes us princes and priests and kings unto the Lord our God the priesthood of God's freed people let's come to number one the purchase of God's favored people as we look at the children of Israel we see what the Lord did for them he purchased them he bought them he paid the price for them so that they will not be the property of Egypt anymore they will not be the slaves of the Egyptians anymore. They will be his own sons and daughters. They will belong to him because he purchased them. And he said, I bought you, I brought you to myself. Exodus chapter 15, verse 16. 
Exodus chapter 15 verse 16 fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm they shall be as still as a stone till thy people pass over O Lord till thy people pass over which thou has purchased he purchased them you remember the story of the children of Israel that night the angel of death was to pass over the land and the Lord said you will take a lamb a lamb for each house you will slay that lamb and you bring the blood into the bowl then you apply the blood on the lintels of the houses and on the side posts as well as the angel of death will pass by the lord said when i see the blood i will pass over you that was how they were purchased how they were bought how they left the land of captivity and they came to the land of freedom the blood of jesus has done the same thing for you and the same thing for me and the same thing for every one of us that the Lord has said when I see the blood I will pass over you and eternal death will not be your portion anymore judgment will not be your portion anymore condemnation will not be your portion anymore because he has purchased us by the blood of his only begotten son Psalm 74. In Psalm 74, we're reading from verse 2. Psalm 74, verse 2. Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old. It's still referring to that great transaction. How the lamb was slain for them, and how the blood was sprinkled for them. And he said, it is by the price of that blood that they were purchased. And it goes on now to talk about Jesus. That by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus, he has purchased us. And as a result of that purchase, we now come to the Lord. We are brought to the Lord. We are reconciled unto the Lord. We will not perish anymore in Jesus' name. And it talks about the whole congregation. Remember thy congregation which thou was purchased of old. The rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed. And the mount of Zion wherein thou hast dwelt. The New Testament brings out the truth very clearly. That we are purchased, we are bought by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Son of God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 28. Take ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God listen to this which he has purchased with his own blood that's talking about the price of our redemption and the price of our purchase that because Jesus died because he died on the cross of Calvary for you and for me we're no more belonging to the world or belonging to the devil he has purchased us for the blood of his only begotten son in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 for ye are bought with a price that affirms it that confirms it it shows what the lord has done and it reminds you, reminds me, that because of what Jesus did, 
what happened to the children of Israel as happened unto us too. That were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the only begotten Son of God. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of the sinless, perfect, spotless, blameless Son of God has been shed for us. And because we believe in him, that blood now purchased us and brought us unto him. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. You come back to Exodus chapter 19. And you look at verse 4. And you see that as a result of that purchase, as a result of being bought by the blood of the Lamb, it now brings us into the fold. It brings us unto himself. Ye have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bear you. I carried you. I lifted you up. On eagle's wings, and I brought you unto my cell. That means now we belong to God. If you have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, you belong to God. If you have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb, you belong to God. He has brought you unto Himself. He has reconciled us for the Father. And we become the children of God and the children of the kingdom. And because we're children, great privileges are ours. Great opportunities are ours. And great precious promises are ours. It tells us in the New Testament language how we come in reconciliation with the Lord, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things of God, who has reconciled us to himself, brought us unto himself, united us unto himself. He has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. To which that is to say that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Let's come to point number two now. As we reach verse 5 of Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. Reading from verse 5. Now therefore. Now therefore. Because you are bought. Now therefore. Because you are purchased. Now therefore. Because he has taken you out of Egypt. And he has brought you unto himself. Now therefore. Because now you belong to the Lord. Now you are reconciled unto him. Now therefore. If ye will obey my voice indeed. He gives them a commandment. And it says, this is what I require. I require faithfulness. I require obedience. I require submission. Because now that I brought you to myself, if you will indeed obey my voice, here is the privilege, the opportunity, and the blessing, and inheritance you are going to receive. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. The peculiarity of God's faithful people. 
What's the peculiarity? We obey the Lord. We submit to the Lord. We're loyal to God. We're faithful to God. We abide in His word. And it says, as long as you're abiding, as long as you're faithful, as long as you're obedient, you will be a peculiar treasure. The peculiar people you ought to be unto the Lord. And then that gives us peculiar privileges, peculiar promises, and the peculiar things that He does for us. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26. I'm reading from verses 18 and 19. Deuteronomy 26, verse 18. And the Lord has avouched you. The Lord has affirmed you. The Lord has confirmed you this day to be his peculiar people. As he has promised unto thee that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. That's the peculiarity of God's faithful people. That because he bought us, we become his. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. We belong totally, entirely, completely unto him. And because of that possession he has of us, like an inheritance, he says, this is what I demand of you. That you will obey my voice. You'll be faithful unto me. You'll submit and surrender yourself unto me. And he says this day, he has avouched you. He has affirmed you that you will be his peculiar people. As he has promised that thou shouldest keep. How many of his commandments? Tell me out loud. All his commandments. In verse 19, and to make thee high above all nations which he has made in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people, a set apart people, a separated people, a holy people, a righteous people. Unto the Lord thy God, as he has spoken. This peculiarity goes on, even into the Psalms. Psalm 135, verses 4 and 5. Psalm 135, verses 4 and 5. For the Lord has chosen you. Has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. That's the doing of the Lord. That's because he manifested his love. Just like the New Testament tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life and because of that love he showed the love to jacob to israel he has shown the love now to the people of god everyone that believes in the lord and because of his love everlasting love because of his love universal love because of his love an impartial love that he has for everyone he has created. Now he calls us. He says, partake of my love. And as you partake of that love, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you become the purchase of God, the inheritance of God, the people of God, and the precious, peculiar treasure of the Lord. I pray that that peculiarity will show up, will show forth, shine forth in your life in Jesus' name. For I know in verse 5, the Lord is great and that 
Our Lord is above all gods. What we have read in the Old Testament also comes to the New Testament. The peculiarity of God's favored people. In Titus chapter 2, verse 14, it tells us that we're peculiar, peculiar treasure, peculiar inheritance, the peculiar people of God who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself what kind of people? What kind of people? A peculiar people. A purified people. A special people. A holy, righteous people. Blameless people. A peculiar people. Zealous of good works. First Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Talking about believers and talking to the children of God. Those who are bought with a price. Those who are purchased with a price. Those who are redeemed by the price of the blood of Jesus. It says in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But she are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that he shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That shows you very clearly. That what he did for the children of Israel in the Old Testament, he has done for us today. And we too, we are God's peculiar people. And I pray that all the privileges of being peculiar, the Lord will grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. And the single thing that stands out, a great thing that stands out is that the peculiar people of God are faithful in Psalm 101. Psalm 101, verse 6. The peculiarity of the children of God and the importance the implication of that peculiarity that we are obedient unto his word, we are submissive unto him, we are faithful unto the Lord. Psalm 101 verse 6, Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me, he that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. And the New Testament tells us that that faithfulness is required of everyone. Faithfulness. Faithfulness to the Lord. Faithfulness to the word of the Lord. And faithfulness to the calling of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I pray that the grace to be faithful, the Lord will grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. Point number three now is the priesthood of God's freed people. The priesthood. Of God's free people. Exodus chapter 19 tells us from verse 6 there, and ye shall be unto me 
a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. A kingdom of priests and an holy nation. The Lord Jesus is our high priest. And now he brings us to himself as priests under him. And you know the priests of the old covenant. Anytime a problem arose. Anytime a plague broke out. Anytime a challenge happened. Among the children of Israel. The priest or the high priest will take the censer in his hand and then go into that place of the plague. And the moment he offers the sacrifice, all the plagues will be over. Now, we have that same privilege and we have that same opportunity that any problem, any challenge, as we come as the priest of the Lord, all the plagues will be over in Jesus' name. It tells us in the passage we read before that we're priests unto the Lord. That's first Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 9. It says, But ye are a chosen generation. Thank God we're chosen. I said, thank God we are chosen a royal priesthood. That means there's royalty in us. And there's a priesthood also as a ministry. And we stand before God on behalf of men. And we speak unto men on behalf of God. Because we are priests unto the Lord. A royal priesthood. And holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Will show forth the glory of God in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, we're reading from verse and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and he has made us kings and priests unto God his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He's made us kings because of the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. Because of the washing of the blood of Jesus. We're kings in the sight of the Lord. That's what he made us. That makes the word of our mouth to be mighty and powerful. Because where the word of the king is, tell me, there's power. And in your life tonight, the word of the king is sent for. There'll be power in your life in Jesus' name. And then he has made us priests unto the Lord, unto God, his Father. And because we are priests unto the Lord, whenever we open our mouths to pray, he answers our prayer. You are a priest before the Lord. He has answered your prayer already in Jesus' name. In First John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 verse 22 And whatsoever we ask We are priests Whatsoever we ask We are purchased of the Lord Whatsoever we ask We receive of him 
Because here is her faithfulness now. Here is her loyalty now. Here is obedience to the word of God now. Because we keep his commandments. And do those things which are pleasing, pleasant in his sight. The word of God assures us he answers our prayer. He has answered your prayer. Amen. Chapter 5 of First John. Verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything. If we ask what? If we ask what? Anything. According to his will. He hears us. As the priest of the Lord tonight. He will hear us. He will hear you. And whatever you bring before the Lord. You can come with confidence. Because Jesus is our high priest. And we are priests. Under the leadership and under the instruction, under the revelation and inspiration of the Lord. And he gives us that same privilege. In fact, he gives us more than the privilege of the Old Testament people. When we speak before the Lord, he answers us. He will answer our prayers now. We will rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. He brought us. On eagle's wings. And because he brings, he brought us on eagle's wings. He has purchased us. He has made us his own peculiar people. And we're priests unto the Lord. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, yes, I believe. Yes, I know. This is what you have done. I am purchased by the Lord. I am bought by the blood of the Lamb. And because he has bought me, he has purchased me. I can tell the Lord what I need. I can stand upon the promises of the Lord. And his promise will be yes and amen unto you. Purchased by the Lord. Bought by the Lord. Brought unto the Lord. Reconciled unto the Lord. You belong to Him. You are in the family of God. You are a peculiar treasure, a peculiar possession, a peculiar inheritance unto the Lord. He answers your prayer. He favors you as a person, his own child. He loves you. He's thinking about you. He cannot fail. He will not fail. You belong to him. He's thinking the best for you. He's planning the best for you. He has provided the very best for you. Inheritance of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is there for you is precious, purchased, peculiar treasure. The purchase of God's precious people. Peculiar treasure. See yourself in a peculiarity. You are not just a common person, 
a downtrodden person, a despised person. You are precious. Your Lord, He has purchased you. Not ordinary, peculiar, and uh, precious. And he has made us kings and priests unto the Lord our God. Kings, priests, unto the Lord our God. And because we are king, where the word of the king is, there is power. That watch is in your mouth. The word of authority. You can make a decree. Say, Lord, here is it. And it will be so. I will praise unto the Lord our God. We, every brother, Every sister, every child of God, we are priests unto the Lord our God. Accept the privilege of your priesthood. Accept the efficacy of your priesthood. You belong to him. He commits himself unto you. He will honor your word. He set you free. He made you a priest unto himself. In Jesus' name we pray. And the peculiar people of God said, yeah. and those who are standing on their inheritance and their right as king, as priest unto the Lord, and we say, yeah. the Lord has answered your prayer. Yeah. And the Lord will show you and give you the manifestation of that answer in Jesus' name. <laughs> Waiting on the Lord, you will never be the same again. Are you sure? Yes. I said, Waiting on the Lord, you will never be the same again. Yes. It is not by feeling, it is not by struggling, it is not by crying, it is just to know that. This is who you are in the sight of the Lord. You are a king in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. You are a priest in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. You are precious and peculiar in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. You are purchased, you are redeemed, and you are brought to the Lord in Jesus' name. Yeah. All the promises of God are yours. All the provision of Calvary, they belong to you. You will eat the good of the land in Jesus' name. There's going to be a confirmation now. I said there's going to be a confirmation now. In whose life? A confirmation in whose life? An inheritance in whose life? 
answered prayer in whose life? You believe that? Yes. You accept that? Yes. It will happen. Yes. Where is he? And where is she? Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless your name. We know that you have called us unto yourself. We are peculiar in your sight. We are precious in your sight. You have bought us and you have brought us into the kingdom. We are children of God. I pray at this time now, the promises of God will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you'll make us pure and peculiar. Make everyone holy and righteous. Make everyone obedient and faithful. And we pray, Lord, as you have lifted us up by the sacrifice of Jesus to be kings and priests in your sight, that position you have lifted us up to where we live in the good of it in Jesus' name. Make your word authoritative in every mouth. Make the word the word of a king and the word of a decree in every life in Jesus' name. And Lord, with that authority and anointing of the king, I pass the decree that every sickness in your body, every mountain in your family, every challenge you face, come out in Jesus' name. I pray that the healing of the Lord, the deliverance of the Lord, will be yours right now in Jesus' name. As priests to the Lord, Lord, I pray every infirmity, every plague, will come to an end in everyone's life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, as you have brought us out of Egypt, all the sicknesses of Egypt, forever they are gone. All the evil occultic powers of Egypt, forever they are destroyed. All the slavery, all the captivity, all the oppression, all the affliction of Egypt land, Forever they are demolished and taken away in Jesus' name. Confirm the freedom. Confirm the deliverance. Confirm the dominion. Confirm your power in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the peculiar people of God said, yeah. 